Welcome to the third of several recordings on how to use ChartDog to calculate rate of improvement using a linear regression or ordinary least squares method. Um, ChartDog is a free tool that teachers or educators can use to calculate and rate of improvement and also to create a chart around those data. In order to do that, I have already created an account on ChartDog. If you need some guidance on how to do that, there is a previous recording on how to create that chart and also another recording on an overview of a chart. I am going to just click on my stuff to help me get to a new chart. You can see that I have three documents already saved in my charts. Um, I'm going to be creating a new chart today. I have a new student that I want to um, enter data for and to calculate rate of improvement over the course of the school year. I'm going to just click on the left hand side where it says create a new tool document under chart dog graph maker and click on that. When it says leave this page, you do want to do that even though you might be concerned that you're leaving ChartDog. Um, this is going to actually get you to the chart that you need. So once you're there, you can see that I'm still logged in and there's this Save Document tab. That's very important for me to know so that I can save this chart um, to enter more data or to share with others. This instructions area, there's some basic instructions on how to use ChartDog that you may want to look at before you get started. So you can see that I have this blank chart and I'm ready to create my chart. So the first thing I'd like to do is go under chart options and you can see that once you select something it gets into a blueprint. You just click on that and whenever you see this um, cloudy screen that means that there's a screen for you to enter more data. So up here at the top is the title of your chart and then what you're going to label the X and Y axis. I'm going to be charting data for a third grader. So I'm going to say third grade and I'm going to be doing computation. For you, you would want to enter the student's initials or name so that you can, you know whose chart this belongs to. You may be charting several students in a classroom or school. The x-axis is going to be the dates. So I'm just going to type in dates. And then in this case, since it's a math computation probe, I'm going to be recording points that the student gets. So I'm going to write points in this space. If you were doing a literacy measure, such as oral reading fluency, you may be labeling this y-axis as words correct per minute. This chart can be used for multiple of measures, behavior, math, reading, writing, whatever data that you want to calculate rate of improvement, you can use this, this tool. So once I save that, you just scroll back up to the top and you can see that I have a third grade computation chart. I have points and dates listed. You can see that the phase of this chart is June to July, which is a month. I want to change that so it goes the course of a school year from fall to spring. So it's already created for you. So I'm just going to click on this pencil and edit it. So I'm going to start this in September and I'm going to use the first universal screening date, which is going to be the September 7th. And that's, this is just a random date that I'm picking. I'll just hit OK. The end date, I'm going to click and go all the way to May. And we'll just assume that it's the second Wednesday of the month and click on the 10th. Once I hit Save, I can go up to the chart 
and I can see that the dates now go from September 7th of 16 to May 5th of 17. So that's a nice span of data for the school year. During this phase, and I'm going to edit this, so I'm going to click on the pencil, I'm going to be using um, a research-based program called Intensive Intervention. This is just a random name at this point. You have other choices that you could use during this phase. So I'm going to hit Save. And you can see that now my chart has a label. <clears throat> so I need to know what my goal for the school year is, and I also need to know what um, the aim where the student data is entered. So let's just fictitiously um, think about a student who is really struggling on third grade computation. I'm going to use Dibble's math benchmarks. And I would like to set the goal for this student to reach benchmark on a third grade level at the end of the year. And looking at my benchmarks, I know that is 29 points. So I am going to go under Goals, and I'm going to create a custom goal. And the value of that goal is going to be 29. So I'm just going to type 29 in there. And you can select whatever line color that you want. Um, let's select purple. And this is, I'm going to put um, third grade benchmark there just so that I know that I set the goal at the third grade end of the year benchmark. So let's make that more clear. Sometimes you may, of course, I, you may want to be setting, uh, setting goals um, that might not be a benchmark. You want to really customize that. Maybe a student is really, um, really um, at the lowest end of intensive and you're concerned about a student reaching that benchmark. But for our purposes today, we're just going to set it at the end of the year benchmark. And then I'm going to hit Save. And then I can check my work at the top. And you can see that the third grade end of your benchmark is this purple line, which is 29 points at the end of the school year. I also need to set an aim. So um, let's pretend that this student was at the highest limit of intensive on this measure in the fall, which is a score of 8. So over the course of the school year, this student needs to go from 8 points correct to 29 points correct. So I'm going to set my aim. I'm going to click on Aims and create a custom aim. The start value is the beginning universal screening date data, which we said was 8. And we want the end value to be 29. And that would be the same number as your goal. I want my aim line to be light blue. And I'm going to save that. And now you can see at the top of the chart, I have my goal line and my aim line there. So now I'm ready to enter my data. I'm not going to need Series 2 or Series 3 or Series 4, so I'm just going to hide those for now. And I'm going to concentrate on Series 1. In order to create a new entry, you just click on the plus sign. And that is going to start at the very first date that you started your chart, which was September 7th. 
I am going to put in that first universal screening data point right there as 8, and I'm going to hit Save. When I do that, you can see that that red square is that first data point. And then as the student goes through the school year and does more progress monitoring with you, you'll want to obviously change the date. So it's automatically going to go to the next day. Uh, we typically don't do daily progress monitoring. Possibly you would. Um, in this case, I'm just going to go two weeks later on this measure and the student is progressing nicely and we'll put in 11 points and hit the Save button. So you can see that that second data point is graphed and you can see that that data point is actually above the aim line. So at this point, it looks like things are starting to go in the right direction. So you continue to do that by entering uh, multiple data sets, and I'm going to do that every um, two weeks. So that was the 21st. I'm going to go to this first Wednesday in October. I'm going to add a couple of data right here quickly for us so that we can get enough data points to um, have a relatively um, complete graph. And one more data point, I'm going to click on the plus sign, and I know that it was the 5th, I'm going to go to the 19th, and student was really starting to show some progress. And you can see that this <clears throat> data set is really going in the right direction. So you would continue um, to enter data in this series just the same way. If you need to um, take a data point out for some reason, you just click on the delete entry. If you need to edit a data point, you just click on the pencil and it will change automatically. So let's go down to data analysis because as you can see from this chart, we're still missing the um, trend line, which is our slope, which is our rate of improvement line. So I want to go under data analysis, and if you go down to trend line, ordinary leaf squares, and just click on that and go up to the top, and we want it for all, right now we only have one phase, so yes, we want all of the phases in this series, and hit save, you will see now with the red dotted line that this is the student's trend line for those data. And we're happy that that trend line is above the aim line and the student is on track. In fact, you can, um, you can take your data points here and go out to this goal line and it looks like the student is going to reach the goal much earlier than the end of the year, which is great news. If you look down at the bottom here, for slope, you can see that this student slope is 0.16 points, and that is per day. Typically, rate of improvement is reported in weekly. So you would just take the 0.16 and times that by 7, and the student is growing at 1.12 points per week. So you'll continue adding data across the year, and of course the rate of improvement will change as the data points go up and down. Um, on Right now you can see it's a real nice line, but we know that there is many times some variability in some data, and that we can expect. For example, if I would just click one more data point in here, and I would change this to um, October, excuse me, November the 2nd, and let's say the student had a dip, and I put a 7 there, and hit save, which can happen. 
you can see that the student's aim line, excuse me, the student's trend line dipped as well with that data. So um, we hope that does not happen, but you can see that that will change. And as the data changes, um, the line will also change. If we go to, and you can see that's also automatically calculated into the slope. You still times it by seven. So we're going to leave this student on a positive trajectory. I'm just going to delete that entry. And this is a much nicer picture of rate of improvement. So now I want to share this graph with others. So I would like to go down to print reports. And if I want a PDF version of this so that I can print it out, or possibly you have a report that you want to add this to, And so here you can see in PDF form the actual uh, chart um, data that's been entered here, the value and the comments, if you had any comments. And then it would also tell you um, what the aim line was starting at 8, ending at 29, and then what the slope is, keeping in mind that that is a daily rate of improvement. And typically, you would report that in weekly. So that is a basic overview of ChartDog, um, of using Intervention Central as the location to find your charts. One thing we haven't done yet was save this document, which is very important. So I just click on Save Document. And if I go up to My Stuff, which is third grade computation, you can see that today's date and third grade computation is there. And I just click on that chart whenever I want to enter more data. So wishing you best of luck with entering data and calculating rate of improvement, and hopefully this has been helpful to you.